everybody, it's Miss Phoebus, and I'm back with another lesson, Lesson 62, Nonlinear Regressions. We talked about linear regressions, but what happens when it's not a straight line? That's the question for today. So, our skill, I can fit any given function class, being nonlinear, to data by using a graphing calculator or by using knowledge of those functions. And our standard for today is to be able to represent data on two qu quantitative variables on a scatter plot and describe how the variables are related, fitting a function to the data, and um, being able to come up basically with an equation that best models the data. We're going to be on page 312 in our notes, and when you get there, you're going to see this, that not all scatter plots have to be linear. So the one on the top right hand side looks pretty exponential to me. It's got that big drop and then it kind of flat lines as it goes to the right. So that would probably, not 100% sure, but probably be modeled by an exponential function quite well. The bottom left one looks very much like a parabola, um, so that would probably be a quadratic regression. And then the one in the bottom right-hand corner is kind of cubic looking, so we might run a cubic regression. So in the top left-hand corner, we have all the different ones, and I tried to show you in a different video about all the different regressions, and we're going to focus on the linear regression, the quadratic regression, or the exponential regression, but there are other regressions that you can model with. So here we go. We're going to start off with the table. Now, the thing is, is that when you're just given some random table and you're not told that it's supposed to be a linear regression, um, then you kind of have lots of options. You have the linear, you have the quadratic, and the exponential. And we're actually going to look at all three, which ones best fit. But when you look at the wording, if they say, find a line of best fit, or they use the word linear, you can go based off of that. So if it says line of best fit, think that it's linear, and then you can go straight off of that. If they say something like in this case, write a regression equation that best models the data, that kind of leave it open-ended, they do not say line of best fit, then you have to kind of explore all three. So what we're going to do is we're going to break out our graphing calculator, and this is where being able to look at a scatter plot is very helpful. So we're going to hit stat and enter. We're going to put in our table. So I've got 20. All right, I've got all my x values in. Now I'm going to get my y values. So this is also something that you can use if you're not sure if the table is linear or quadratic or exponential. You can get a picture of it. So what we're going to do is I reset my calculator. I'm going to go and turn my stat plot on. If you have not reset your calculator, it may still be on. I hit second y equals, and I'm going to hit enter twice, enter, enter. And then I'm going to hit zoom 9. And zoom 9 pulls me back to show me this. Now, if they were going to insist upon a line of best fit, a linear path wouldn't be too bad. The question is, is that the best kind of model for the situation? So if you don't know which model is going to be best, you kind of have to go through all of them to be able to determine which one is going to be the best one. And then graph it and see which one is closest to the best one. So what I have here, I'm going to show you on, in my notes, is I have gone through... There's, there's a scatter plot that's like a screenshot of the black and white one, the black and white calculator. And this is the linear. It hits exactly at one point right there. It gets really close to all the other points. So that is the linear regression. This is the quadratic regression. If you notice, it hits three points. So that's better than this one. And then this is the exponential, and it doesn't hit any points. So in order to know which one's best, you kind of have to go and do all three. 
and take those regression equations and stick them into y equals. So let's go and walk through just a couple times how to do the linear, which we've already done before, then how to do a quadratic, and then how to do an exponential so that you can see where all three of these models came from. So back to my calculator. What I want to do is I want to do stat, right, and four. Four is my linear regression. Enter, 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 enter. And so remember that we're rounding, so we are introducing a little bit of error. So what I would do here is I would do linear y equals and write my equation 5.3, let's go ahead and do 396x less rounding, right, plus 566.576. We'll do that. Okay, that is our linear model. And again, we're just punching buttons on the calculator and writing down what the calculator gives to us. Now, I don't have to make any changes to what I do to get the quadratic, except I do stat, right, and I go to 5. Enter, enter, enter. And so now I have a different equation. I'm going to write in blue. So here's my quadratic regression. And that would be y equals negative 0 0.0, let's do 2, 1, x squared, plus 8.093x, plus 497.606. So we've given it a couple des extra decimal places. But look here, do you see how they have it written? Like they've got the format written out for you. You don't have to guess where things go. They're telling you the standard form there. So A goes in front of the X squared, B goes in front of the X, and C goes at the end, just like our normal standard form. All right, we've got one more to do. We're going to do the exponential. So stat, right, and then it's zero. Sometimes you can go up and get to a little bit faster if you just remember zero. And then enter, enter, enter. So I'm not doing anything different except choosing a different selection in my regression. So here's my exponential. This was like a homework problem and it was very open-ended and I wasn't quite sure which one. I would go ahead and do all three. Sometimes it'll say which quadratic function best model. So then they kind of put you on the right path. Sometimes it's definitely easy to tell. But from our scatter plot, it's not, I mean, if, if I was going to just go based off of my scatter plot, zoom nine, I would go linear, but we already saw that linear is not the best. So we want to make sure that we're choosing the most appropriate one, and so you may have to write some things down. That's, that's the hard part, is making yourself write something down um, a couple different times. So if I want to double check this, let's say I wanted to check the quadratic and make sure that it matches, maybe Ms. Beavis made an error, which is always possible. Some of you remind me in my typos that I can't change on Edpuzzle. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I read the wrong number down. I like checked it like three times too, and I don't know what, what was wrong with me. All right, so there's the quadratic. Make sure that I typed it in right. Looks good so far. All right, so graph we should expect it. And I think even just in the rounding, we hit one fewer but we definitely hit two. We get really, really close to all of them. And you can even, if you really, really wanted to, you can come through and do all of them to make a comparison. 0.006. But it's like, what do you need? So if you see the words uh, line of best fit or linear regression, just do the linear. But if they, again, leave it open-ended, and you see how they're all kind of really close. They're all in the same area. But I really do think that that blue one fits the best, that quadratic model. So I would um, definitely mark or circle and be like, hey, this is the one that I choose for my answer. Okay, here is example two. Um, again, we're in this write a regression equation that best models the data. So we are going to... Now we know about projectiles, they're usually best modeled with quadratics. So we could even say, well, that's probably a good place to start. So 
I'm going to type in my X's and then my Y's and then look at a picture of it and see if it looks quadratic. And then uh, zoom nine. And yeah, it looks pretty quadratic, although something's happening there at the end. Um, maybe the a big gust of wind got a hold of it, hasn't quite come down. But I would say, based off of this, a line is not going to be the best model. Uh, an exponential function would start low, go up, and then just keep going up. And if we did a decay, it would be coming down and down. So I don't think an exponential would best fit. So sometimes you can tell from the scatter plot, and that's where having that skill of being able to graph the scatter plot on the calculator is helpful. Now you have to be careful because sometimes if you look at an exponential curve, um, the other side, it could, it could be modeled by a quadratic as well. You could just have one side of the parabola. So kind of keep that in mind too. All right, so I'm going to do a quadratic regression. So I'm going to do stat, right, and I'm going to go to 5, and I'm going to do something a little bit different here. And I'm going to stop at the store reg EQ. And what that means is I'm going to tell it, when it writes its quadratic regression, I'm going to tell it to put the equation that it's writing into y equals for me so that when I go to graph it again, it's got that in there. Now, this is a couple extra steps, but it is something that, you know, you don't have to round, you don't have to, you know, or if you want to um, try a couple different things and you want to make sure that it's precise, you can do it this way. So what you need to do is right next to clear, there is a button to the left called VARS, which stands for variables. So we want to go to variables. We want to go to Y variables. And again, this is optional. You could completely write this down. And we want to choose one. We want to use the function one. And then these Y1, Y2, Y3, these are the same Y's and the Y equals. So if I pick Y1, Y sub 1, then it will put it the equation in Y equals that first equation. So that's what I want to tell it to do. Enter. And again, that's completely optional. It's something that some of you might find interesting and helpful later. Not required. And then, so there's my quadratic regression, so I could write it down. Um, but if I go to y equals, you see it's also there, and it's there with all the decimal places. So if I want to double check this and make sure it's the best fit, then it's already stored in here. And I can go back and pull it later and say, yeah, that's the one that I want to use as my answer. If I go to the graph, and then it hits most other points there. So I would say that that's probably the best regression equation. So I'm going to go back. Um, again, we're going to round. So this is going to be negative 12.8. Oops, let's throw a y equals in front, make it an equation. Uh, negative 12.87 x squared plus, there's a 42 point something, yes, scroll through, 42.22x, and then keep scrolling, uh, plus 1.18. Now, if you graph that piece that I just wrote, it would be very similar but it wouldn't be exactly the same as the one that I have graphed here with all the decimal places. It would be very close though. All right, so there are ways to where you don't have to completely copy everything down and get a graphing calculator. I might do another one of those, but um, it's again, optional. What's not optional is you having a calculator out practicing putting things in the table and practicing running linear and quadratic and exponential regressions. That is not optional. All right, so there's a picture, and that was the linear regression, and that's what the linear regression would look like if I run on it, and that hit almost hits one point, and there's like a point down here too. So it misses most of the points. The quadratic, which is the one that we found, is the best. And the exponential, there's a problem with it, so you can move on with your life, um, as long as you've 
uh, done everything okay. Now, the following is the price in dollars of stock prices between 1990 and 2000. Write a function the best models of data. So again, very open-ended, not telling you what kind of function, not telling you that it's a quadratic regression um, or a linear regression or anything like that. So if it does spell that out, make sure you use the one that they are telling you. Now, we're going to have a problem with the exponential regression if we keep these as 1990, 1992, 1994, 1996, 1998, and 2000 because these are going to be up in the exponent and that's going to be way too big. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut these down to 0 and 2 and 4 and 6 and 8 and 10. So this would be, X would be years since 1990. Um, doesn't have to be that way. You can label them something else, but you would want to keep that pattern because 1990 and 1992 are two years apart. You would want to keep your numbers like 0 and 2 are two apart. You would want to keep them um, in the same fashion like what you were using for um, making sure that your uh, X values are equally spaced just like they are in uh, the table. So because I'm clearing this up now, it is, or changing this, it is going to have an effect on my actual equations. So if I go back and I do like this, the original table compared to what I have now in a linear regression, my numbers are going to be a little, a little bit different. So let me walk you through that just really quickly because it is possible to make these changes and um, to make these changes and change up your equation and not realize it and not realize what you're doing has an effect. So let's look at say I was going to run a linear regression on this. So notice that my y-intercept is negative 4,595. Okay, so if I go back and I change this to 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, my y-intercept is no longer negative 4,595, it's a positive 4.687. So changing my x values um, is going to have an effect on my equations. So if I'm going to be comparing and um, trying to write things, uh, especially if it's like a multiple choice option, I want to go ahead and look at my answers. And if I see really, really big numbers, I probably am not going to change anything. But if I see a lot smaller options and I'm looking at 1990s and 1992s, um, I might want to change. Um, I definitely need to change for my exponential function. So it's one of those things where it's like, you could try it one way, you could try it another way, but if exponential is going to give you some problems, you might want to just go ahead and, and change it at the beginning. For my linear, and I haven't even looked at the scatter plot yet, but I already have my linear regression up, I'm going to go ahead and write this down. So linear is going to be y equals 2.31x plus 4.6 9. Again, if you want more decimal places, that works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at the graph. Zoom 9 definitely has a bit of a curve to it, so I don't know how I feel about that linear piece. Um, could be exponential, could be quadratic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and when I do my quadratic, I'm going to put in its equation into y1, and when I do the exponential, I'll put its equation into y2. And then we'll write down which one, but I definitely think because of this curve, a linear is not going to be the best. So let's do stat. 
right, we'll do our quadratic first. So we're going to choose 5. And then I'm going to stop at that store regiq. Again, I just want to go through it and show you how to do it. Um, it's not necessary. It's not something that you have to know how to do. But it's vars. And then scoot over to y vars. And then hit enter and enter in this case. And I'm going to do that one. And so that would be my quadratic that gets put in. I'm going to go ahead and do, um, ooh, let's go look at the graph. Okay, hey, that's hitting pretty nice. Looks like it hits two for sure. Let's look at the uh, exponential. So stat, right, and I want zero. And then I'm going to put that into y2. So vars, y vars, function, and then I'm going to put it in y2. Enter, enter. And there's my exponential regression. And oh, it's so close. So close. Um, I, I think that red one might be a better fit. Sometimes it's going to be hard. Hard to tell. So, let's see. I'm going to clear out that. That's a lot of stuff to clear out. But I feel like the red one is a better fit than the blue one. Just my personal opinion. So I'm going to write down my exponential, and I'm going to choose that as my answer. The exponential, 6.75 times 1.16 to the x. And I'm going to say that that's a better fit. And get rid of that linear piece. Now, it may be one of those things where you have to make that decision, but I would think on the end of course test it would be fairly obvious. Um, so there was the linear regression. Here's the quadratic regression. Definitely hits three points. That was, let me go back. This is the error that you get if you don't change them to zero, two, four, six, eight and 10. But when you do change them, there's the exponential. And yeah, you can see a little bit better on this one. I don't think you could, could quite see it, but on the black and white one, it fills in four of the points. So that's why it's a little bit better. It actually goes through this point when the quadratic does not. So just some different things to play around with. And not everything has to be linear. All right, so we've got a population present in bacteria culture over five days. Now with bacteria, we know that that is usually doing some sort of exponential growth. So which function best models the data? Hmm, that's the question. So let's go back to our calculator. So my guess, just right off the bat, knowing what type of problem it is with bacteria, I would say it's some sort of exponential. So let's look at the scatter plot. Now, what happens if you just hit graph? Well, this is where the scatter plot was in the last problem. You want to hit zoom 9. If you do not hit zoom 9, it won't go to where the scatter plot needs to be. That does look pretty exponential. However, it could be quadratic, and it may be close, one of those where it's too close to tell. So definitely would say not linear. So let's do stat, right, 5. And I'm going to do this again, because I think it's fun and cool and be able to see the line going through it so it can help you make a, a better decision. And then stat right zero for our exponential regression and then bars y bars I'm gonna put that in y two and again it may be too close to tell we'll have to see okay so I definitely like the blue one better I think that it's closer to the points 
than that one. And so the blue one is the quadratic regression. And the red one is the exponential. So I say we throw out the exponential, get rid of this one, and then we'll write that quadratic down. So going through the steps on the calculator and being able to compare the two, uh, I feel is, is something that's going to be helpful to you. So this is y equals 24.66x squared plus 26 point so I do 26.7x plus 50.54 and that would be my equation that I would want to use. Now there is a part B that goes along with this. Can we run a regression to help us estimate the population after seven days? So you could plug in a seven here and here. However, we already have this in the calculator and if we go to the table, we can go to seven and we can say, oh, there should be about 1,446 bacteria because we would probably want to round to the nearest whole bacteria so at day seven there are one four four six bacteria and that's again a prediction so you can based off of the equation just go to the table especially if it's a nice whole number. Um, if it's not a nice whole number, you might want to plug things in. So um, in this part, remember how we had to be able to write equations of quadratics and linears um, given a graph or even given a, a table maybe or some points or things like that. Um, with the points, you need to have several points for especially for a quadratic and and even for an exponential function but because of that you know being given that data that information in point form or in table form you can now put those points put that table in the calculator and do an exponential regression or a quadratic regression so being able to write other equations given even a graph. So what I could do is I could pick points from this graph and that's what I did. 2, 1 is a point, 3, 2 is a point, 4, 4 is a point, 5, 8 is a point, and this is really really good for the end of course, and then I know that this is an exponential function so if I want an equation that best models that using those points, all I've got to do is run an exponential regression and then I've got y equals 1 fourth times 2 to the x, and I've got an equation there. So for example 6, I would put in points, and I would want to put in several points. So I've got 0, 0, I've got mostly positives because that's where my vertex is, but I also have some negatives there just in case to be able to get that arm way up there. Um, but I picked some nice numbers, nice points. Here at 7, 7 comma, ah, that's a weird number, but 8 comma, negative 4, nice number. So you really want to focus on the nice numbers and not having to estimate. And then you can run, in this case, a quadratic regression. That's a quadratic function. y equals, and this would be 1 quarter or 1 fourth x squared plus or minus 2.5x and then there wouldn't be a c value so you could write plus zero or you could just leave that off so that's kind of what's going on with those so i'm going to walk you through number seven and then number eight is going to be something special so number seven here all right and then we're just going to start typing stuff in zero one And maybe you can't remember, or you're not sure, or you just don't feel like writing an equation. Well, what you can do is you can type it in to your table under stat. We can go and look at a scatter plot. Um, zoom 9 to look at the scatter plot. That definitely looks exponential, so let's run an exponential regression. That would be zero. 
And let's say I want to check it. This is because we can. So there's our equation. Let's see what it looks like on our graph. Hey, it hits all the points. So this is a really, really good equation. And so then I have it right here in my y equals. Y equals 4 times 1 half to the x. And there's more examples. And it actually should, R showed that that hit that point as well. All right, so example 8 is yours. I want you to practice putting points, nice points from the table in. And I want to see either a picture of your graphing calculator, your physical graphing calculator, or I would like to see maybe a screenshot of your um, calculator on your Chromebook showing me um, the data table that you put in. I want to see the data. And then showing me also the equation that you have from the calculator. And then what would you, how would you write it? Because sometimes it's easy to just see, oh, here's A, here's B. But then when you're being asked to write the equation itself, you might not be 100% sure on that. So really, I want kind of three pictures from you. I want a picture of the table on your calculator. I want a picture of the equation, like what this has right here from your calculator, and then I want a picture of how you would physically write out the equation. That should be the easiest part. Okay, so that is your exit ticket. I need you to email it to me um, today, today when you are uh, watching this video. So go ahead and do that, and remember, it should be a quadratic regression because this is a quadratic function. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, by the way, it's about a week until our end of course, so don't forget that you need to be able to get here via bus or car or, I don't know, airplane? Can you fly here? Maybe helicopter? Anybody can afford a helicopter? I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!